Um, my father is Abdul Hagi Al Khawaja, and he is a human rights activist. My father is one of the people who are fighting for freedom and for human rights long before the Arab Spring started. In fact, he's been doing that for the past 20 years. Um, Ten of those, we were in exile, but when we did come back to Bahrain in 2001, my father has been targeted since then. Um, my father's job is basically um, to educate people about human rights, to empower them, to teach people that they must fight for their rights, and also to report uh, human rights abuses that are taking place. He's been doing that not just in Bahrain, but recently even in the region and all the other uh, Arab countries as well. You wrote to President Barack Obama and you graphically outlined the circumstances of your father's most recent arrest. Can you tell us what happened? Um, it's been almost a year now since my father's arrest. Um, what happened is that special security forces attacked our house and beat up my father and arrested the, all the men in the house. Um, my father was beaten brutally in front of us. In fact, uh, his jaw was broken. It was broken so badly. My father now has more than 20 uh, metal plates in his uh, jaw and more than um, 30 screws. Um, there's no longer any bones on the right side of his face. After that, my father was um, imprisoned in a military prison that is not found on the map. He was in solitary confinement for more than two months where he was uh, tortured often. And were you allowed any contact with him? For the first two months, we had no idea where my father was. We did not know what was happening to him. Um, when they took him from us, they left traces of his blood on the stairs, so we weren't even sure he was alive at first. Um, after those two months, when the military trial started, that's when we started seeing him. And what is the condition of his health now? He, he began a hunger strike some days ago. Today is the 20th day of my father's hunger strike, and before these 20 days, he was on another hunger strike with all the political prisoners as well. His health is not very good right now. It's deteriorating day by day. Um, he did collapse a few days ago. Um, he's being taken to a hospital almost on a daily basis because of low blood pressure. He has lost a lot of weight. The last person who saw him said that he was not well. He could barely walk. Um, but she did add that he still had that sparkle in his eye. And the last thing my father, the last thing we heard from my father is that he said um, he does love life, but he loves freedom more. And this is what he's calling this hunger strike. Uh, he has called this hunger strike freedom or death. Uh, he says he will not stop the hunger strike. He will not eat until he either gains his freedom or he dies. And many people are now on hunger strike in solidarity with your father around Bahrain. Um, can you tell me how that has developed? My father has become, an, like, he is known in Bahrain, he has become one of the leaders um, in Bahrain of the pro-democracy movement. Many people look up to him and are very upset at what is taking place. First of all, he was sentenced to life imprisonment, uh, he was tortured, and even inside prison he has always been speaking out. He is not a person to be quiet or to stand aside and watch injustice. And because uh, what's happening in Bahrain, the oppression that's happening here is continuing day by day, that's why my father decided um, to go on this hunger strike. Uh, many people in Bahrain and outside of Bahrain who know my father are very upset. Um, until now, there are more than 100 people in Bahrain who have gone on hunger strike in solidarity with my father. And your father has passed on his strong record in human rights to you and to your sister. You've been arrested as well a number of times, uh, including most recently on the anniversary of the, the uprising. What happened? What happened is that we peacefully started marching towards Pearl Roundabout, which to us now has become symbolic for freedom, for democracy and civil liberties. Um, and they started shooting at us, which is often what happens in Bahrain. If you go out and protest peacefully, uh, you get attacked by riot police and they shoot at you. Um, when they started shooting at us, I did not stop and continued marching towards Pearl Square. And that's when they uh, arrested me. You have found another way to, to tell your story to the world and you, you tweet regularly as Angry Arabaya. Has that been important to you in spreading the message and, and in, in gathering friends around the world? 
Twitter has been very important to me, has been very empowering to me as well. Um, in many situations, I have found myself with nothing, um, nowhere to go, nowhere to run to, except to, to write on Twitter to let the world know what's happening here. I have been with many uh, injured protesters, some of them as young as 14 years old, who lost their eyes inside home, home clinics because they were too afraid to go to hospitals. Um, I have been in many protests that were brutally um, attacked. Uh, I have seen so many things and uh, found myself just tweeting about them and getting a lot of um, support from people around the world. So Twitter has been very important to me, but I'm, I'm sure that it's not enough. There has to be more. Um, the world, the international community really has to act to stand with the people of Bahrain and the pro-democracy movement in Bahrain. Do you see any possibility of the authorities releasing your father? Has he been charged and convicted of any offence? Has he been brought before a court? My father was brought before a military court, and when he did speak out about torture in court, he was beaten and pulled out of court in front of everyone who was sitting there. He was not allowed to have any witnesses um, uh, speak for him. He was not allowed to speak in court at all, and then he was sentenced to life imprisonment and uh, for inciting hatred against the regime and trying to overthrow the regime is what they convicted him of. What do you want the world to do? As I'm speaking um, to an Irish radio, I think it's important to, to mention that my father is inspired by the Irish um, movement for, for rights and freedom as well. And I remember on many occasions him telling me stories about um, activists in Ireland and what they had done about hunger strikes that happened in in prisons in Ireland as well. And I think the difference should be that now in the 21st century, the world should not stand aside and let something like this happen. They should not stand aside and let a good human being, a person who fought for others all his life, die in prison and